Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Developer channel, the channel where I try to use my skills as an iOS developer and try to create software that has a positive impact on the environment. If you're interested at all in following that journey, look at the vlogs that I do on this channel that follow the development process of my apps. Today I'm doing a little bit of a different video, no development this week. I'm going to try to answer a question that I think a lot of people might have about why someone might want to become an independent developer. Before we get into that, I want to give a little bit of background about myself. I graduated in 2019 with a Bachelor of Software Engineering. During that time and a little bit after graduating, I have accumulated somewhere around two years of professional software development experience. I think that topic of having a degree versus not having a degree is blown way out of proportion in our field. In my personal opinion, I don't think it matters that much. Um, if that's what you want to be doing, I don't think a degree is the thing you necessarily need. And I also don't think having a degree is a bad thing in either way, it just depends on the person. But I still wanted to be transparent about it so you have a better understanding of my personal context. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the first topic related to becoming an independent software developer, and that's money. If you're watching this video, I have no doubt that you know that software engineers right now have a lot of opportunities for really good careers and really good salaries. Especially if you start looking at the big companies, the big American companies, or the big startups, software engineers can be making sums of money that you really can't ignore. And even if you go outside of those big tech centers and just go to a normal big city or even smaller cities, you'll have no problem making a nice living that you can be happy with for the rest of your life in our field. So even ignoring all the other perks that come with working at a big software company, why would someone try to become an independent developer? Because it's true, you could be an independent that makes the next big app or ends up starting his own startup after his product is launched and makes it big. So there is a possibility of making even more money than what you would have been doing at a big company. But for the vast majority of people, that's simply not going to happen. And working a full time job is much more likely to bring in more money in the long run than starting an independent journey. And the reality is some people just don't really need all of that. I'm not saying there's any right or wrong, but one of the big appeals of these companies is that money. And when you remove that incentive because you personally don't need it or don't want to make that much at that point in your life, then it loses a lot of its appeal. Now, I'm obviously not saying it's wrong in any way, shape or form. Um, people are at different stages in their lives, have different needs, different goals in their life, and it's perfectly fine to want to make that kind of money and to go work at a big company. But for me, at this point in my life, I don't have kids, I have very minimal expenses, I live in a city where I don't really need a car to get around at all. I live in a small apartment with my girlfriend, we share rent, and we really don't need to be making that much money to live comfortably. And there's a big likelihood that this is going to change at some point in my life. Maybe when I have kids, I'll really want them to go to the best possible school, and so I want to make sure that I have enough money to be able to make that happen. But at this stage in my life, I don't need all of that. And so the appeal of working at a big company to make a lot of money right now just isn't there for me. Which brings us to our second point, if you could be living a lot more comfortably working at a company, why would you decide not to do that? Well, for me at least, software engineering and all these tools that I've developed over the years, I've all seen as possibilities to have a positive impact. It's an opportunity to take all the ideas that you have in your head and all the things that you want to become a reality and just do them. Being an independent developer is the perfect way to force yourself to break your brain and find a way to make that a reality, to have a positive impact with what you're doing. If you're working in consulting or on a product that already exists, Sure, you can offer improvements and see that you have a positive impact in whatever you're doing, but that sense of trying to fix all the issues that are around you and try to make people's lives better is a lot more present 
once you're the only person responsible for coming up with something of value. And to continue on that vein, being the only person responsible for everything makes sure that you have to be at your most creative. You're never just cruising along, just implementing the ideas of someone else. You're always questioning what you're doing. You're always trying to come up with new ideas. You're always trying to do better. And that in itself is one of the big reasons why someone might want to become independent. Having all those responsibilities like thrown on you is an incredible motivator and if managed well, is a great way to achieve more and to do better. And on top of all of that, since you're wearing all those hats and you have to be creative and think about design and think about how the people are going to use it, you end up learning so much more just because you have to touch on all subjects at the same time. You know, think about the gaming industry where there's a lot of people that try to go independent. Somebody that works at a AAA studio that does those huge games and he works there as a programmer will probably get extremely good at programming that specific genre of game or just programming games in general. But there's a big likelihood that he's never gonna learn to draw his own art for his game. Whereas, you know, somebody that works as an independent for a game, right away I think of the guy that made Stardew Valley. Maybe you won't come out of it at the same level and caliber as a programmer or game programmer, but along the way, you also learn to do your own art in your own style for your game. You don't become a master of something specifically, but you develop skills that touch a lot more fields at the same time. And I'm not saying that's better or worse in any way. There's just some people that prefer to dig deep in a single subject, and there's people that can't stick to a single subject, and it helps them to touch a bunch of different ones and learn about a bunch of different things, and those are the people that are probably more likely to try to do something with independent development. Now I want to touch on something that I had when I first started thinking about giving this whole independent thing a try, and it's this very simple question. Do you need to be an incredibly passionate programmer that, that wants to program all the time and loves it to become an independent developer. And the thing is, sure, it's a lot of programming. And if it's something that you hate or you don't enjoy at all, then you're never gonna be able to finish anything. But the reality is, like I said before, since you touch so many subjects, your work gets split up in a bunch of different little things. Especially if you don't wanna, you know, contract other people to help you do the project. And so I think the people that are the most likely to enjoy being independent software developers are people that are not die-hard programmers that do it for fun, for 80 hours a week and whatnot. Somebody that only wants to program is probably gonna be frustrated at the idea that they need to be doing graphics, they need to be doing assets, they need to do design and think about user experience and stuff like that. But if you enjoy programming as one of the aspects of this whole thing, it actually becomes a perfect balance. I've never been someone that does programming for fun all the time. I need to have some kind of project I like to do. I like to keep informed, but I'm not always programming and always reading about programming. I like it as a part of a bigger picture, and so it fits perfectly for me, because I get to do it to achieve the goal I want. And since I have to do all these other things around it, I get to do it in a small enough amount that it just stays fun and nice all the time. Which brings me to my last point. If you're someone that values routine and having things done in a particular way all the time, this is probably not going to be for you. But if you like having a different challenge every day, if you like the ability to change where you're working from every now and then, if you want the ability to change the hours you're working at all the time, being independent is the way to go. You don't need to set a specific schedule. You can work the amount of time that makes sense for you for the goals you're trying to achieve. You can work from home or from a designated office if you want. You can move around the country because all you need is an internet connection. Or you can stay put if that's what you want. 
you just have so much more flexibility over what you can be doing with everything else that surrounds the project you're working on. And that, to me, is probably one of the biggest motivator. I'm pretty sure I burned out at my last office job because it was just the same thing every day and it took its toll on me for some reason. I do a lot better mentally when I can change around things to fit how I'm feeling. And at first sight it might seem like it means working less, but what ends up happening is I'm more productive, and I'm more creative, and I end up working a lot more in the end because I can move it around to fit how I'm feeling. So there you have it. This wasn't really a planned video. I just dropped down the camera and started talking to it about what I feel about trying this whole independent thing. I just think if you're someone that doesn't necessarily value the money that you're gonna get working at a big company, if you're someone that has ideas that you want to bring to life, if you like doing all the parts from development to marketing to design and do everything about a project, and if you're someone that values having a flexible schedule and flexible goals and that likes working for themselves, then I think trying to become independent might be something that you'd be interested in. It's a really scary thing to do and who knows if it's gonna pan out and work or if I'm just going to go back to an office job at some point in the future. But because I feel the way I do about all the things I just talked about, I think I owe it to myself to just give it a try to at least see where it brings me. Even if it works or doesn't work, then I at least know what it's like. So that's gonna do it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, make sure to like it. If you have any comments, comment down below if you're an independent, if you've thought about becoming independent. If it's just not for you at all and you prefer working an office job because you know you want to stay put at the same place and, and that's perfectly reasonable, I'd like to hear about it have your thoughts about it and otherwise I'll see you guys next week for probably a more regular vlog and yeah take care